It's funny. Uh, literally yesterday, uh, it was a part of my Manscaped ad read, too. Uh, I mentioned the Twins' uh, rotation being soft. And, of course, this same day, uh, Joe Ryan goes seven innings, no hits. Um, and there's arguments. Well, should Rocco have pulled him? Uh, there's two ways to look at it. One, the Twins technically are in a playoff hunt. Uh, I think they're five and a half games back, but come on, they're playing the Royals. They should certainly get a couple wins here. But it's either this, have a chance to get your 18th or what, 19th? It hard, it's losing track at this point how many playoff losses consecutively. It's either that or having Joe Ryan's elbow being pulled clean off the bone like some slow roasted ribs. Uh, tough, but uh, other words, uh, big news, Team Affinity, uh, Season 4 here. The brand new featured program is coming in hot. Some pretty crazy cards and some very, very ludicrous attributes we've seen. I'm, I'm getting pretty damn excited. I, I am. After what was a little disappointing first stretch there. But let's get into new reveals. Let me know what you guys think about these cards down below in the comments section. Which cards you guys are gunning for. And let's get into it. So... Yesterday, they went ahead and revealed the AL Central, um, which there's some names here. There's some ones that are intriguing, in my opinion. We'll start things off looking at this Donruss baseball card for Cliff Lee. Um, God, it is, so <laughs> it is really amusing, at least to myself. Maybe I'm the only one who thinks it's funny. Uh, that these guys are looking like they're in a, you know, sponsorship for a non-licensed mobile baseball game. <laughs> They're just wearing the Hanes t-shirt and the plain baseball cap that your dad might have. Uh, but Cliff Lee is the Guardians card right here. Of course, I did get that one wrong. I will say, I was 4 for 5 on this stretch right here. I've never truly loved Cliff Lee cards. They're always just, eh, you know, they're there. It's not McCutcheon Morsel or whatever uh, new fodder the collection's going to be on Friday, but I don't think it's going to be like a top 5, top 10 starting pitcher. But we'll see, because the attributes are pretty damn crazy. They're a hell of a lot better than you'd think looking at, you know, like an Alan Trammell card right here. You're just squinting like, damn, they really put me in this shit, huh? They didn't pick Granderson, they didn't go Kurt Gibson, they put me. Nobody, I don't even want to use this card. Um, he's here. You're going to have a lot of contact, probably maxed out. If he gets to 90 power, I would be shocked. Um, but I'd also be happy because then it could kind of be like a Cal Ripken card, um, which would be a little insane to, uh, I don't know. Alan Trammell's a great player. It's just some legends don't, uh, make the transition smoothly when it comes to Diamond Dynasty and how good they could be. Um, Torrey Hunter is an interesting one. Now, Torrey Hunter hasn't exactly ever had a, a crazy card. I don't think his TA4 last year was probably the best he's ever had. And I want to say they put him back in the game in MLB 20. Um, I'm cautiously optimistic. The problem with him is, you know, they just stack his defense up to like 99 everything. Which, uh, again, fielding, it's not not important. Like, if Torrey Hunter had 60 fielding, you know, that'd be a big fucking problem. But the difference from like 80 compared to 99 or uh, even like 95 isn't really that big of a deal. So... It really just boost up in overall, and they hinder on the offensive stats for Torrey Hunter usually a lot. So, uh, Ray Durham, uh, unironically probably the one I'm most excited for here. Uh, yeah, Torrey Hunter, uh, I am. If I had to pick here, I'm probably going Ray, Torrey, and Cliff Lee. Um, actually, maybe Trammell, as much as that sounds crazy to say. Uh, but Ray Durham, a switch hitter, should have a lot of contact. His card's fucking crack, man. His uh, BR card, I think I batted 650. Nearly 700 with a gold card in BR, obviously. Facing up against jobber bronze cards on all-star difficulty. Against half of the players who are just on their handheld switch mode. Getting ready for their mom to call them for dinner. Not exactly the highest competition there, but he did well. And then Brett Saberhagen, the guy who's just kind of here. Um, again, it was pretty obvious he was going to be the pick here. Um, which, again, we are 4 for 5 on. And one thing I will say... Uh, once we get to the attributes, I think you'll kind of change your tune because no, these are not the craziest names. We could have gotten a Maurer. We could have gotten a Curtis Granderson. A uh, couple of these are a bit tougher, but uh, I want him to add more legends. You don't have to add like, you know, we don't need Jeter, A-Rod, uh, Bonds all in the same year. Sosa. If you just put in some good franchise legends like Maglio for the White Sox and the Tigers right there, it'd be great. Uh, the Royals. Uh... 
that's a bit tougher one. Uh, moving on to <laughs> uh, the AL West right here. We got some more big ones starting out with um, Edgar Martinez for the Mariners. He was not one of the big ones I was talking about. Uh, the contact is going to be big. The power should be fairly big. Um, but the defense, ooh, un pequeño, un pequeño. Little few years reserved from the Spanish two, if you wouldn't believe it. Um, I don't know. He's kind of just going to be a card. Uh, punch, Ivan Rodriguez. I would very much like for him to be more than just a card. Usually he hasn't really been too much of a factor in DD. And they put him in MLB 19. I'll be honest, I can count on probably two hand, maybe one hand, how many times I've used his cards. Uh, they just always are a bit underwhelming, and they always stack them behind a great catcher. We just got Posada. Mike Napoli's hard to beat. It's going to be tough. They're going to have to really juice Yvonne Rodriguez, um, you know, just like he was doing himself. So if he can do it, why can't you do it, SDS? Um, Jared Weaver. Very excited about this one. I'm glad they didn't go Troy Gloss or Tim Salmon. I think this is going to be the best option gameplay-wise. I really liked his 94 overall card. He even hit a fucking home run for me, which is pretty cool. Um, he could be very good. It all is pretty contingent on the hit per nine. I think his pitch mix is a basic sinker repertoire, if I do remember correctly. Yeah, four seam sinker slider. Circle change up 12-6 with a pretty damn good velocity differentials uh, as i'm looking right now you guys can't see it just take my word for it damn it uh, i'm excited for jared weaver ricky henderson you could almost put him in the same boat as ivan rodriguez in terms of they kind of just fuck over his cards sometimes but i hope they don't do it again uh ricky is one of the greatest players ever a lot of people don't put him in those same lines they kind of just assume oh he was a base stealer he was like billy hamilton but a bit better hitter no ricky henderson was phenomenal he was really fucking good, but you wouldn't know it based on how few people use his cards in DD. Some people do, obviously, but he should be like top echelon of cards. Thinking of the max speed, uh, the good defense, the high power for a leadoff hitter. Uh, I really want them to put him to glory. His swing, you know, is not the greatest, but, you know, we can work with that. It's all a mental thing at the end of the day. Uh, then Roy Oswalt. Uh, again, I am excited for. I've very much enjoyed Roy Oswalt cards in the past. Uh, he could be good. I uh, think, again, a pretty standard sinker pitch mix for him right there. Uh, I'll be honest, this is probably, to this point, the best division that we've seen. Um, the only one I just know off offhand that's probably not going to be good as Edgar Martinez. Everybody else could be pretty damn great. Here we go. The NL East is certainly not the least. It's kind of, you know, flashing back to MLB 20's team affinity where um, the American League was kind of lackluster and then we just get a bunch of big boys right here. A.G. Burnett, Hank Aaron right there for the, uh, for the Braves. Um, A.J. Burnett, again, it's kind of the point where it's, you know, it's Gary Sheffield or it's A.J. Burnett. There's two options that the Marlins can pick. They don't have Cliff Lloyd's rights anymore. Um, he's good in the game. That's that's a good thing. His team affinity card, speaking of MLB 20, was pretty great. So I'm looking forward to him. Again, do I think he's going to be better than Randy? Do, do I think he's going to be a de facto top five starting pitcher? Not necessarily, but if he's good, I'll give him a fucking shot. Hank Aaron, he's gotten bad cards in the past. But based on how much they're juicing these cards, I know you see the face of the franchise. Uh, again, speaking back to MLB 20, a lot of those cards are pretty underwhelming. I don't think that's going to be the case. From what we've seen with the Posada and the Sean Green, I'll show you in just a moment. These should be right at the meta right now. And a few outliers, I would guess, for better or for worse. On the top end and on the, you know, below the... 16 layers of shit or whatever that money ball reference is but hey Kieran, um wow yeah no snow on the ground yet and he is in the game <laughs> round of applause sds i appreciate it we got andre dawson right here he looks surprised looking at mike shit over here like really they give him a card instead of chase utley roy halliday ryan howard jimmy rollins really mike shit yeah, you and me both, Andre. Um, could be good. He's had very good cards in the past. His uh, POTM card was not really great, but this one could be. So I'm looking forward to Andre Dawson. Uh, kind of a jack of all trades right there. Uh, very good five-tool guy. Uh, Mike Schmidt. You know, we talk a lot about him as far as uh, being underwhelming. 
His swing is a big thing that people don't like. And again, is it an actual thing of the game causing it? Is it something to do with uh, hitter tendencies, where they hit the ball? Is it something to do with vision? Is it just a swing is bad? We don't truly know. It's just a widely given consensus that Mike Schmidt cards do not perform to whatever his attributes say. It's a goddamn lie. Um, but he could be good. It's just a little unfortunate that he gets the card instead of a lot of fan favorites that people, the majority of people playing the game that actually were alive to see. Um, Tom Glavin here for the Mets. Uh, I was technically right on this one. I got, I think I got five out of five. I, technically, I think I said somebody else for the, yeah, I, I didn't say Jared Weaver. I mentioned him. Four and a half out of five, damn it. And uh, I didn't get Hank Aaron. I think I got, what, three? Three and a half out of five? We'll take. Uh, Glavin should be really good. He's a soft tossing lefty. He's going to hit all the spots and a few more. Uh, his pinpoint, his parts, should be tight like they're doing its Kegels. It'll be well up. I, I'm looking forward to Glavin. I didn't love his signature card at least past a few weeks. People started to uh, learn to hit him pretty easily. But uh, Tom Glavin, I am looking forward to. Uh, those are all the cards at this point. We'll see all of them on Friday once they reveal the new TA4. Uh, but let's check out some attributes, man. Sean Green. Yeah, I gave a pretty synopsis uh, the other day saying he's going to kill righties. Correct. He's going to hold his own against lefties. I'd say he's definitely more than holding his own. 102, 100. It's not insane versus left. You know, it's not quite Andleton Simmons levels, according to, you know, who was it? Rory over at SDS who said that. Uh, but he's got gold defense, which is uh, plenty enough. He's got 80 speed out of the box. It's pretty damn good. I'm looking forward to Sean Green. He's got a great swing. Of course, some people remember him from his infamous moment extreme. I think that was, uh, what, MLB 20? A uh, Coobs! Uh, I know, still has nightmares to this day about that one. <laughs> uh, but Sean Green, I, I am looking forward to this one. It's a good card. You know, we thought the Blue Jays could have done a little bit better with maybe Halliday, maybe Delgado. Uh, Sean Green is really fun and it's going to fit some theme teams, as if there's actually a purpose to run theme teams outside of your own enjoyment. Jorge Pacific. Sada, coming in hot. 100 contact right. Instantly, people started shedding tears as if that's the end of the world. Is it? No. I think he's fantastic. I mean, this is the best Posada we've gotten by far. 100, 109 contact plays. If you are halfway good at the game, you're going to have no issue with that amount of contact, even on Hall of Fame. Legend difficulty, yes. Especially, you know, that in turn with the 92 vision. It's not going to be as good as Napoli. For that matter, on Legend difficulty, I put Napoli over him. But on Hall of Fame, it's about a tie. Because you got the switch hitting ability. You have the power, balance versus right and left. And the contact at 100 and 109 really isn't that bad. I know we've had max contact at catcher, whether it be your cap or Napoli, uh, for a long time now. But you lose sight of how good this Posada is. And he can play second base. Um, yeah, I was a little bit shocked by this, as you can see my tweet. Um, yeah, I guess it was a big moment that a lot of Yankee fans uh, recognize. Yeah, he played one inning at second base. I think it was in 2011. Somebody uh, posted this clip right here. Um, I think this was his last year, one of his last few years. They just put Posada out there. Uh, yeah, greatest utility player of all time. Damn right. Realistically, this is Matt Carpenter as a switch hitter, the POTM one that people still vehemently use to this day. I'm looking forward to it. These cards should be juiced. I think we got a good batch. We have two more divisions to look at too. We have the Central and then we have the West. Uh, that'll be revealed the next coming days. So let me know some predictions that you guys still have to those. But yeah, we saw Hank Aaron. We saw Ricky Henderson. We've seen some big names and we're starting to see some good attributes. They're two for two as far as I'm concerned. Again, is Posada the de facto best catcher? No, not necessarily. Is Sean Green better than Juan Soto? No, not necessarily. But I'm looking forward to it. I'm very optimistic about TA4 a hell of a lot more than I was two days ago. Again, as far as XP, just kind of want to fill you guys in on this. If you've already pretty much gotten this program done, you might as well stop doing your daily moments. They're probably going to move these up to 2,500 XP per, which that's 7,500 that you get right off the bat. So just store these up if you aren't looking to get more progress in the current program uh, that is something that transfers you get 30k from the exchanges which are very easy to do um, again march to october it's very good i have a couple videos on the channel where i give some tips for that one right there and you get past xp 
from prior programs. So if you didn't finish this one out, if you play it for the next program, for TA4, you'll get progress for every program that you didn't max out, which is very cool. Also, many seasons is good. You guys can go ahead and preload, um, just get up to the playoffs, and then you're going to get a big reward gate of XP, which is awesome. And, you know, you get the cards, the demon, and the Longoria, which you're going to need for the new collection on Friday. I'm very excited. Their content's in a good spot right now. I hope they hit it out of the park. This is a big program that you do not want to fuck this up seriously um but i'm excited I, I hope you guys are as well i think they're setting it up pretty pretty good to this point so i'm gonna wrap it up there leave a like if you guys did enjoy subscribe if you guys are new to the channel and thank you all for watching i hope you guys are great today thank you